And our shout out tonight goes to the reporters at the Asbury Park Press in New Jersey, a small newspaper with some very big accomplishments. A police chase in New Jersey led to this fiery scene. The car in flames was not part of it, but was instead driven off the road by the vehicle being chased. As the innocent driver, his clothing in flames, runs from his car for help, police arrive. And instead of helping him, some of the officers begin to kick him and then drag him away. The incident was one of dozens discovered by reporters for the Asbury Park, New Jersey press, uncovering what was a $60 million secret involving out-of-court settlements that hid police misconduct. These uh, settlement agreements that we were reporting on mandate that both parties uh, remain silent. Uh, you know, if they were to be asked about the issue, they're just going to quietly go their ways, and uh, the taxpayers end up uh, footing the bill on this uh, largely without knowing about it. Andrew Ford was the lead reporter of a five reporter team at the Asbury Park Press in New Jersey, which produced a 19 part series called Protecting the Shield, a winner this year of an American Bar Association Silver Gavel Award. Uh, protecting the Shield was made necessary because of the shocking uh, incidents that we were covering off of the cops and breaking news beat. Uh, perhaps the most striking is a Neptune police sergeant who fatally shot his ex-wife in public uh, after a car chase in front of their seven-year-old daughter. <laughs> I ended up securing an exclusive interview with him and detailed the numerous warning signs that authorities had before that killing. I killed, I killed the mother of my children, the woman who I was married to for more than 20 years. This was an absolute team effort. Um, a number of reporters, photographers, editors in the room uh, were involved in putting this huge production together. It took us something like two years uh, to get all this done. So this was a sweeping and comprehensive look at police accountability and problems in New Jersey. In all, how many departments did you essentially uh, pull records on? Uh, we filed uh, more than once uh, requests with every department in the state. Uh, that's a total of something like 468 municipal police departments. The reporting found more than 200 New Jersey citizens were victims of what the paper called rogue cops, including one man, unarmed, who died in police custody. His final agonizing moments caught on tape. Sam, relax. You're gonna hurt yourself, man. Relax. No, you're not. Over the buddy. Over the No, you're not. You're not gonna die, Tom. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I got my squad. I'm still dressed. His family sued and settled for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. A fact the New Jersey town was not happy to see published. I think the town passed a resolution condemning uh, the 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 thrust of our reporting, but uh, not finding any errors in uh, the stories that we wrote. They actually passed a resolution <laughs> denouncing you? Yes, the township passed a resolution denouncing us, but important to note, found no error in the story that we wrote about uh, what happened in their town. But the series had huge impact, including from a story of an officer killed off-duty in a car crash. I found out that he was drunk and on drugs at the time. Found out that his department didn't have a policy for random drug testing. So we requested drug testing policies from every department in the state and found that more than 100 departments did not have a policy for random drug testing of police officers. This sounds like the kind of thing that any good local investigative team could do anywhere in the country. And that's absolutely right. Um, and you don't have to be an investigative reporter to do this kind of work. Investigative journalism is alive and well in New Jersey at the Asbury Park Press and at the other papers in the USA Today Network. We're all working together out here and we've continued to have follow-up stories. So stick with us and uh, we'll keep it going. So to Andrew Ford and his colleagues and his dynamic editor, Paul D'Ambrosio, a big shout out for letting its readers and New Jersey taxpayers in on the $60 million hush money secret. That's our program for this week. We hope to see you back here again next week.